May we request MP Sheikh Abdul Wahab back to lead us in the invocation. And please uh, remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem and the Bangsamoro hymn. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana lanakunana min khasir. Rabbana innana sami'na munadi yunadi lil imani an aminu. Rabbana faghfir lana warhamna innak anta tawabur rahim. Allahumma inna nasta'luka min kulli khair. Ma sa'alaka minhu nabiyyuka wa habibuka Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa nasta'izu bika min kulli sharr ma sta'azaka minhu nabiyyuka wa habibuka Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allahumma la tad'al lana dhanban fi hadha al-maqam illa ghaffartah wa la maridan illa shafaita wa la hajatan min hawajina fi hadhihi al-hayah illa antana ala qada ya rabbal alamin ربنا افرغ علينا الصبر وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين والحمد لله رب العالمين mga kababayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas ayang
please take your seat now. The Secretariat, the Secretary General, please proceed with the roll call. The members of the BTA Parliament, the Honorable Abbas Ahmed, Abbas Abbas Lutanay, Abbas Basit Farid, Abu Mati, Dio Jao Rahman Nalonto, Ahang Abdullah, Alami Alaysa, Alaudin Faiz, Ali Ibrahim, Ali Lanang Jr., Ali Edi Mapag, Ali El Cesar, Present, Ambuloto Suarto, Ampatuan Baintan, Anayatin Susana, Asmawil Muslima, Malindong Ali Pangalian, Para Hamid at Amidudin, Present, Masman Anna Tarhata, Present, Burahan Abraham, Gandao Bay Maleha. Present po. Gandamon Lati Paisara. Diabla Musa. Ipatuan sa Prula. Ibrahim Ahod. Ismail Haji Abdulajiz. Present. Kaya Kadula. Gera Edward. Asim Abdullah. Hassan Atimil, Iqbal Mahager, Ismail Rasul, Jajuri Raisa, Jakila Muslimin, Present, Jikiri Al-Bakil, Present, Harun Mungon, Lindasan Datu Muslimi, Loong Don Mustafa, Present. Lorena Jose Ribani. Makako Abdurao. Makapaar Abdullah. Present. Makaraya Jamil. Makasalong Warjani. <coughs> Mamuda Dato Dato Kadafe. Present. Mantawil Malik. Mastura Dato Tokao. Mastura City Siara, Mawali Lamil Bahar, Midimbang Datu Midpantau, Mitmog Rasul Jr., Mujahid Abdul Muhmin, Munyos Hussain, Present, Present, Orana Swahid, Pakasa Mabayda, Pak Abdul Wahab, Pangandaman Nabila Margarita, Present, Ramos Gamila, Rimbang Sultan Edrisa Nasir, Sakar Modayaw, Selinda Al-Said, Sali Al-Said, Saliga Romeo, Salik Ali, Sanki Ali, Sani Punduma, Satar Al-Sad, Present, Sema Omar Yasser, Sema Romeo, Sheikh Said, Silongan Aida, Present, Sulaiman Ali, Tago Paisalin, Tanabil, Uja Sahi, Ulama Melanio, Usman Aspar, Yaakob Muhammad, Yoke Narciso, Lanang Ali Jr., 
Mr. Speaker, with 21 members of the parliament physically responded to the call and 28 responded via Zoom, we have a total of 49 members of the parliament responded both physical and virtual. We therefore certify the presence of quorum, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With the certification of the Secretary General as to the existence of quorum, there being 49 physically and virtually present in today's uh, session, we are in quorum for today's uh, session. One minute suspension. Session resumes. The Speaker of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament will deliver a message for today's session. Thank you, Presiding Officer, Deputy Speaker Omar Sema, Chief Minister Ahud Balawag Ibrahim Al Haj, Bangsamoro Wali Saik Kalipanandu, Deputy Ministers. Senior Minister Abdurrao Bakakwa and other members of the cabinet, fellow parliamentarians of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. More than Two years ago, we were overwhelmed with the enormity of the tasks that suddenly fell on our shoulders. We will be dishonest if we deny that at some point in the fledgling year, we have been anxious if we will be able to accomplish our ambitions. And who wouldn't be? We have to start from scratch because we would totally demolish the old structure and build a new one. Worse, our uncertainty was, was compounded with the onset of the pandemic. Indeed, the circumstances were against us. 
and made our work more burdensome. But failure is not an option because we cannot squander the opportunity that the blood, sweat, and tears of our people have earned and paid for. Our task is to accomplish our mission for our people, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the challenges, and regardless of the difficulties. Alhamdulillah, I stand before you today, honored and proud to be a part of the Bangsamoro journey. Despite all odds, we have overcome and delivered our promises to the Bangsamoro people. We have been triumphant in our endeavors and a substantial part of our success is our united stand towards the accomplishment of our goals. I have been in the business of legislation for more than three decades. And I must say that my work here in the Bank Samoro Parliament was one of the best ever. I was able to work with the most dedicated, selfless, and capable public servants. They are the best and the brightest of the Bank Samoro. The Bank Samoro Parliament, as it is, is an institution whose foundation was erected by people with traditional values, but infused with exuberance and innovation of the youth. Such unique combination was the key in making this parliament, in my honest opinion, the most prolific legislative assembly in the history of the Bangsamoro regional government. The statistics will not lie. As of December 2021, a total of 166 bills were filed. And from this, 24 regional laws were enacted, including urgent and priority legislative measures, such as the Education Code, the Civil Service Code, and the Administrative Code. In the same period, the Parliament held 85 regular sessions and 10 special sessions in order to fast-track legislative deliberations. Despite the onslaught of the deadly virus, COVID-19 may have physically prevented us from working efficiently, but it did not dampen our spirits to to find ways to fulfill our obligations. We could have done more, but limitations on our health and safety require, require us to slow down. I know that a great majority of you have risked their lives, endured so many sacrifices, all for the sake of your work. Some of our people and their families even lost their lives. They are the unsung heroes whose contribution to our institution will never be forgotten. I myself has been a victim of the virus. My bout with COVID-19 almost cost my life, cost me my life. But on hindsight, I do not regret 
that I contracted the virus because of my work. I found solace in the thought that even if I have to leave this world, I have been a part of a lasting legacy for the benefit of the Bank Samoro. As your speaker, it is my solemn duty to guide the parliament. I would have dishonored your trust, as well as our peoples, if I abandoned you during those very difficult times. The recent pronouncement of the Security, Justice, and Peace Cabinet cluster that His Excellency President Rodrigo Roa Duterte has approved its recommendation to maintain the status quo on the current composition of the Bank Samoro Transition Authority. Ladies and gentlemen, is a clear affirmation of the quality of public service that we have provided to our people. The SGPCC said, and I quote, undoubtedly the BTA has over the past two years played an instrumental role in uplifting the lives of the Bank Samoro people and unleashing the economic potential of the region. Given this major accomplishment, its current membership must not only be given due recognition, but must also be given the chance to complete what is, it has started and called. Ladies and gentlemen, the foregoing statement is a more, more than enough to compensate us for our services to our people. But while we are all here to collectively celebrate our successes, our victories, we should not lose sight of the fact that we have yet to reach our journey. There is still a lot more work to do. The extension of the transition government is a perfect opportunity to allow us to finish what the pandemic has effectively prevented us from doing. Another full term of three years is more than enough to finish our remaining tasks, particularly since the overall situation on the current health crisis appears to be getting better. Our accomplishments, therefore, should be our continuing yardstick for our future endeavors. If we were able to steer ourselves clear from the wraps, there is no reason why we cannot do better under more favorable circumstances. I therefore expect every one of you to be as determined and as dedicated, if not better than as before. I expect you to retain your ability to be innovative and relentlessly find ways to solve complex problems. I expect you to be as firmly united disregarding your political and cultural leanings and persuasions to achieve what is best for our people. Let us focus on the immediate enactment of the local government code, revenue code, and electoral code. These are the kind of legislative measures that will surely test our mettle as legislators. I therefore challenge everyone to keep your heads together and work towards the passage of these bills before the year ends. We owe it to our people to pass these laws as soon as possible because they will, this will surely strengthen not just the political framework of the regional government, but its goal towards fiscal autonomy and stable economic development in the long term. Perhaps it will be appropriate at this time 
that we go back to our constituents and feel their pulse on these issues to ensure that these are people-centered legislations. We should also consult experts from par our partners, from our partners in government, as well as in the private sector, to make them comprehensive and well-crafted, indeed a masterpiece of legislation. But even if we will not be given the luxury of time to continue what we started, let us be comforted that it was during our time that the cornerstones of this institution were first laid on. It is our order to lay the first brick, which will serve as a guide to our successors until the last and final brick shall have been placed to complete the side structure. Ours is a work in progress. But the beauty of the edifice that we intend to build can already be seen piece by piece, little by little. And the gratitude of the Bangsamoro people is all yours. Palakpakan natin ang ating mga sarili. Hindi upang ipagyabang ang ating mga nakamit, kundi upang ipagbunyi ang tagumpay ng Bangsamoro. Insa Allah, ito po ang simula ng katuparan ng pangarap nating lahat. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Mabuhay ang Bangsamoro. Advance Happy Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam wa rahmatullahi We acknowledge before we proceed with the today's order of business, we acknowledge the presence of the former first minister of this of Scotland, Lord Jack McConnell, and of course the executive director for Asia and America of the Westminster Foundation for Democracy. Mr. Matthew Hedges, please rise up, sir, so that uh, the people around and the members of the parliament will recognize you. Thank you for your visit to the Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament. Session suspended for uh, five minutes.
Session resumes. Majority floor leader. What is the next or uh, next in the order? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Before we start to today's session, uh, I will intend to move uh, to amend the order of business. Uh, I move to amend the order of business to exclude uh, proposed resolution number seven o three. Seven o three, considering that the principal authors has withdrawn this uh, have withdrawn this uh, proposed resolution, Mr. Speaker. There's a motion to amend the order of business to exclude proposed resolution number 703. Is there any second? There being no objection, the same is hereby approved. And the order of business is accordingly amended. Majority floor leader? Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, we are now on item number six. Reading and approval of journal of the previous session, I move, Mr. Speaker, to dispense with the reading of journal number 57 of March 24 and 25, 2021 session. And I further move for the approval of this Mr. Speaker. Before I act on the motion, what is the concern of uh, the lady from Maguindano? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, on the previous uh, agenda, uh, Amendment of the order of business by excluding uh, PR 703. Um, inquiry, Mr. Speaker, anything that we do related to our work will be not honored by this parliament. Uh, what is the inquiry? Okay, for example, Mr. Speaker, we conduct technical uh, TWG meetings, committee meetings, public consultation. Uh, are all those activities not recognized by the parliament, Mr. Speaker? That is the effect of uh, lack, uh, no authority to continue committee work. In that case, Mr. Speaker, if there are allocation or budget intended for the purpose, Mr. Speaker, what will happen to that budget, Mr. Speaker? Uh, they, they will not be spent during the uh, period of Ramadan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority floor leader? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I think there is a standing motion, Mr. Speaker, to dispense. Yes, with uh, the... there is a motion. There is a pending motion to dispense with the reading of journal number 57 of March 24 and 25, 2021, and the twin motion to approve the same. It has been seconded. There being no objection, the motion is approved. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we are now on item number seven resolutions. May we request the Secretary General to read the first proposed resolution for today's session, Mr. Speaker, including the title and the authors. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of uh, the first proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co authors. Yes, Mr. Speaker, on proposed resolution number 485, entitled A Resolution Requesting the Office of the Chief Minister to Spearhead. The review of the compliance of Article uh, 16 or the Bangsamoro Transition Authority provisions of the Bangsamoro Organic Law in order to identify gaps and define course of actions to address these gaps. Authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Bentan A. Ampatuan. Authored by the Members of the Parliament, Liza M. Adamia, Suharto M. Amuludto, Amil Baharis Mawalil. Don Mustafa A. Luong, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr. and Rasul E. Ismail, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to refer this to the Committee on Rules. There is a motion to refer proposed resolution number 485 to the Committee on Rules. Is there any second? It's been seconded. Hearing no objection, proposed resolution number 485 is referred to the Committee on Rules. Mr. Speaker, again, we may request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Next proposed resolution is proposed resolution number 578 entitled, A Resolution Requesting the Government of the Day through the appropriate ministries and agencies to apprise the BTA Parliament on the status of the implementations of nationally funded programs and projects in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Bahintan A. Ampatuan and Amil Baharis Mawalim, 
co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Liza M. Alamia, Rasul Y. Mitmug Jr., Suharto M. Ambuluto, Don Mustafa A. Luong, Rasuli Ismail, and Romeo C. Saliga, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to repair this to the Committee on Rules. There's a motion to repair. Proposed resolution number 578 to the Committee on Rules. Is there any second? There being no objection. The same is hereby referred to the said committee. Again, Mr. Speaker, may we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Proposed resolution number 701, entitled... A resolution urging the Ministry of Health to increase the financial assistance of barangay health workers in the BARM, thereby giving due recognition to their invaluable contribution to the delivery of health care services at the grassroots. Authored by Honorable Member of the Parliament, Amin Bahar S. Mawalin. Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Liza M. Alamia, Suharto M. Ambuludto. Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Baintan A. Ampatuan, Don Mustafa E. Luong, Rasul E. Ismail, Abraham Tiburahan, and Siti Sara I. Mastura, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to refer this to the Committee on Health and the Committee on Finance, Budget, and Management. Second. There is a motion to refer proposed resolution number 701 to the Committee on Health and the Committee on Finance, Finance Budget, and Management. It's been seconded. Hearing no objection. Proposed resolution number 701 is hereby referred to the said committees. Again, Mr. Speaker, may we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, proposed resolution number 702, entitled Urgent Resolution Readapting in Toto, resolution number 120, Granting Ramadan allowance to all personnel and employees of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao for Ramadan 1443 Hijri year, pending deliberations and approval of the Parliament Bill Number 171, authorizing Ramadan economic assistance to Bangsamoro government officials and employees, authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament Omar Yasir C. Sema, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I move to treat this as simple resolution and be transferred for the business of the day. There's a motion to refer proposed resolution number 702 to the uh, to treat it as a simple resolution and be transferred to the business for the day. It's been seconded. There being no objection. Proposed resolution number 702 is referred, uh, is referred to the uh, business for the day. Uh, Mr. Speaker, may we request again the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution? The Secretary General is re directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, proposed resolution number 704, using the name of the authors and co-authors. Yes, Mr. Speaker, proposed resolution number 704, entitled Resolution Expressing Deepest Sympathy and Condolences to the Bereaved Family of the Former President of Mindanao State University, Dr. Kamar Ampaso Umpa, authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Maisara D. Natip, co-authored by the Members of the Parliament, Siti Shahara Aymastura, Basit S. Abbas, and Bainon J. Caron, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to treat this as simple resolution and be transferred for the business of the day. A motion to treat proposed resolution number 704 as a simple resolution be transferred to the business for the day. It's been seconded, no objection. Uh, proposed resolution number 704 is transferred to the business for the day. Again, Mr. Speaker, may we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, proposed resolution number 705 is entitled The Resolution Congratulating and Commending Attorney Basari Di Makuta Ma. Pupuno on his appointment as the 8th President of the Mindanao State University System. Authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Maisara D. Natip. Co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Siti Shahara I. Mastura, Basil S. Abbas, and Bainun J. Karol, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to treat this as simple resolution and be transferred for the business of the day. Proposed there is a motion to refer proposed resolution number 705 as a simple to treat 
uh, proposed resolution number 705 as a simple resolution be transferred to the business for the day. It's been seconded. There being no objection, the same is here approved. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Speaker, may we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, proposed resolution number 706 is entitled, Resolution Establishing the Code of Ethics for Members of the Parliament, authored by the Committee on Ethics and Privileges and the Officers of the Members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament. Sir Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to refer this to the Committee on Rules. There, there is a motion to uh, refer proposed resolution number 706 to the Committee on Rules. Been seconded. There being no objection, proposed resolution number 706 is referred to co Committee on Rules. Mr. Speaker, again, may we request the Secretary to read the next proposed resolution? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co authors. Mr. Speaker, proposed resolu resolution number 707 is entitled a resolution urging the Bangsamoro government to fully implement the setup of citizens' charter and the establishment of public assistance complaints desk in all government offices in BARM. Authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Abdullah B. Hashim. Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Suwaib L. Uranon, by Maleha B. Kandaw. Mudayaw M. Sakar, Basit S. Abbas, Mujib C. Abu, Edi M. Ali, Nabila Margarita P. Pangandaman, Milanyo U. Ulama, Zayo Rahman Alonto Ajong, Paisalian P. Tago, Unduma B. Sani, Abdul Wahab M. Pak, Don Mustafa E. Luong, Jose I. Lorena, Baintan A. Ampatuan, Abdul Mohin Mujahid, Maisara D. Latif, Ibrahim D. Ali, and Safrola M. Dipatuan, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to treat this as simple resolution and be transferred for the business of the day. There's a motion to treat proposed resolution number 707 as a simple resolution and be transferred to the business for the day. Been seconded. The same is, uh, the same is hereby approved. Again, Mr. Speaker, may we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed resolution? The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed resolution, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Sir Speaker, proposed resolution number 708, entitled Resolution Respectfully Requesting the Office of the Chief Minister to Consider and Undertake the Inclusions of the Situations and Issues of Energy Situation in Lanao del Sur in the Agenda of the Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources, and Energy, and Intergovernmental Energy Board for Possible Actions, authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Paisalin Pitago, co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr. and Mudayo M. Sakar. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to refer this to the Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Energy. There is a motion to refer proposed resolution number 708. 708 to the Committee on Energy and Natural Resources. And seconded, there being no objection, the said resolution is trans referred to the said committee. Mr. Speaker, we are now on item number eight, first stage of bills. May we request the Secretary General to read the first proposed Parliament bill for today's session, including the number, the title, and the authors. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of proposed BTA Parliament Bill Number 180, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, BTA Parliament Bill Number 180, entitled An Act Promoting the Modernization and Development of All Airport Terminal Building Facilities in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes, authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Amil Bahar S. Mawalil and Siti Shahara I. Mastura. Authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Liza M. Alamia, Suharto M. Ambulutu, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Baintan A. Ampatuan, Don Mustafa E. Luong, Rasul E. Ismail, Abraham Tiburan, and Paisalin Pitago. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a private member bill. Any members of the Parliament would like to be Co-authors or by the interest as co-authors, they may do so by filling up the co-authorships a form that was distributed before this session started. Mr. Speaker, again, may we request the Secretary to read the next uh, to read the next Parliament bill 
uh, first stage of bills for today's session, Mr. Speaker. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of proposed BTA Parliament Bill Number 181, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, BTA Parliament Bill Number 181, entitled An Act Institutionalizing Conflict Sensitivity in the different planning process throughout the hierarchies of the Bangsamoro government, authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Amil Bahar S. Mawalin, co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, Liza M. Alamia, Suharto M. Ambuluto, Rasul Y. Mitmog Jr., Bayintan A. Ampatuan, Don Mustafa E. Luong, Rasul e. Ismail, Abraham Tiburan, and Siti Shahara I. Mastura, Mr. Speaker. Again, Mr. Speaker, this is a private member bill. Any members of the parliament who would like to signify the interest as co-authors may do so by filling up the co-authorship speech. The co-authorship form before this uh, session started. Again, Mr. Speaker, may we request the Secretary General to read the next proposed parliament bill for today's session. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the next proposed BTA parliament bill number 182, including the name of the authors and co-authors. Mr. Speaker, BTA Parliament Bill Number 182, entitled An Act to Declare the Burial Site of the Late Sheikh Salamat Hasim M. ILF Founding Chairman and the Late Alim Abdul Aziz Mibantas M. ILF Vice Chairman and Vice Chairman for Military Affairs uh, as Hashim and Mibantas uh, Historical Shrine to provide for the preservations of the historical shrine and burial site and for other purposes, authored by the Honorable Member of the Parliament, Paisalin Pitago, co-authored by the Honorable Members of the Parliament, uh, Nabil Eitan, Jose A. Lorena, Abraham T. Burhan, Kadafi J. Manguradato, by Maleha B. Kandaw, Basit S. Abbas, Marjani S. Makasalong, Mudayaw M. Sakar, EDM Ali, Baintan A. Ampatuan, Don Mustafa A. Luong, Maisara D. Latip, Nabila Margarita P. Pangandaman, Bainon J. Caron, Faiz S. Alaudin, and Rasul E. Ismail, Mr. Speaker. Again, Mr. Speaker, this is a private member bill. Any members of the parliament like to signify the interest as co-authors? They may do so to fill, but, uh, to fill up the co-authorship form before this session started. Yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, we would like to recognize MP Romeo Sema to... Uh, deliver a uh, speech on his uh, water of privilege uh, and collect, uh, collective and personal privilege, Mr. Speaker. May I ask if there is any pending legislation connected with the privilege speech of uh, MP Sema? No, Mr. Speaker. You may now proceed. You are acknowledged. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Majority. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Honorable Speaker, Attorney Pangalian Balindong, uh, distinguished colleagues, guests, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Mr. Speaker, I, I rise before you on a matter of collective and personal privilege. Early this month, I received the acceptance of the Chief Minister on my courtesy resignation and later turn over the Ministry of Post of the Ministry of Labor and Employment to its new minister. At first, I was stuttered, stuttered upon knowing that I will be replaced in my post in this office. For three years, I have seen and been part of the workforce of the ministry when it scumbled its way up and inventory grow in functions, responsive programs, extension services, human resources, and physical structures. I know that in administering the ministry, I have been in my base and all knows. I did not fail him nor the chief minister who appointed me and the people who have expectation who have expectation on me. But that reaction was very short-lived. Gratitude and gladness switch in. Peace supersedes it. And alhamdulillah, that's what filled my heart now. 
in the first place, they who were responsible for this chance were also the same people who gave me the chance to be seated in the ministry. They have given me the privilege and the opportunity to serve others through the mandates of the position. I was able to meet and serve people of different kind and needs. It was a great opportunity. I was actually giving charity without selling out a cent from your pocket and even being paid for it. It was more than an opportunity. It also gave privilege. It also gave prestige. Alhamdulillah, the act brings freedom from any ill feeling when I got to embrace the new minister to formally turn over the post. I was humbled by the momentous occasion, humility and gratitude, bring joy and peace. This being the greatest of our feelings should be our ultimate aspiration at all times and in any circumstances of our life. As the elections of our new local officers in the national and barn region is nearing and political campaigns have started, it is with prayer that they too will imbibe this great feeling. A simple gesture, gesture of humility that prosper, tranquility, and peacefulness within me and the people around. I call on our brothers and sisters who are electionists or re-electionists and their supporters to just peace amidst the challenges brought about by this electoral process. Let us stop the usual bickering, confrontations, and intimidations to ease up and prevent big-scale hostilities. And for the abid supporters to listen to the extreme fanatism to their chosen candidates, as it will just lead you to pointless disagreements and distorted serenity. Let us really rely the peacefulness of the 2016 election when then the winning candidate for president, President Rodrigo Duterte, made no much push in running his candidacy by just focusing on them beating his platform. He got guns, gold, and goons to terrify his opponents, but preferred to lay low and let the people's choice make its way to the victory, to his victory. And this become one, if not the most peaceful elections of the country, so they worthy of emulation. emulation. This electoral process, Mr. Speaker, should be an exercise that will not cause disruptions of the peace we are now enjoying, enjoying since we have gained our autonomy. This should not cause disbandment among families, among us, Bangsamoro, Asura R. Imbran, verse 103, provides and hold fast to the robe of Allah all together and be not divided. To make this happen, I am calling to the peace, I am calling for peace in the hearts and so sobriety of all the aspiration candidates and their followers that all us will prevail when humility and peace is in your heart. All of, all of us will, will be done. And to the people in charge of the institutions, 
and enforcement agencies in this political exercise, like the COMELEC, the Philippine National Police, the Armed Forces, the Poor Watchers, the Board of Inspectors, and others, I ask for the utmost honesty and integrity to the intact during this trying and tempting, tempting times. As the vanguard of the election, we will still put our truth, we will put our trust in your hands. Trust that you will be responsible in preserving the integrity, integrity of the whole process of election by making sure that it will be done in free, peaceful, and orderly manner. Mr. Speaker, again, my brotherly reminder to all our Bangsamoro brothers and sisters to be firm in affording peace and support the Bangsamoro government's bigger intent of not just winning much covered electoral posts, but to win against disunity, hostilities, and poverty. Let us chart our political future our visions of real peace and sustainable development through a peaceful and democratic process. Wabilay Taufik Walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Majority Floor Leader. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. My one minute suspension. One minute suspension. Personal and employees of the Barcelona Autonomous City in Moscow, for Ramadan 1443, Hijin year, pending reservation and approval of Parliament Bill number 171, authorizing Ramadan Karami Kassis as government officials and employees. One minute suspension. Floor leader, Mr. Speaker, I yes, move to Mr. open. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, I move to open the period of interpolation and debate. There is a motion to open the period of interpolation and debate for resolution number seven zero two. Seven zero two, Mr. Speaker. For deliberation. Huh? For deliberation, Mr. Speaker. For deliberation. For deliberation. Any objection? Chair hears none. The period, uh, the uh, period for deliberation. We will now deliberate on resolution number 702. Yes, Mr. Speaker. May we respectfully recognize MP Paisalin Tago, MP Paisalin Patuan, MP uh, Amin Bahari, Mawalil, MP uh, Sultan Limbang, in that order, Mr. Speaker. 
gentlemen and ladies, you will have to limit your interpolation to two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My interpolation is two minutes plus 20 minutes. That is equivalent to 22 minutes. Go ahead. Go. Anyway, anyway. I'm joking. Mr. You have no... Me, 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 you can go on. May I be allowed, Mr. Speaker? Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. If the main sponsor is willing to accept some clarificatory questions. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, the resolution is a reiteration of the previous one that was given last year for the Ramadan, what do you call this? Ramadan bonus or Ramadan, Ramadan allowance? allowance? Ramadan allowance. Uh, why do you call it allowance, Mr. Speaker? I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the, the, the primordial reason last year was that uh, we, and not necessarily pandemic, but the, only, the one way to motivate our employees to work harder during the period of Ramadan, because, you know, during the period of Ramadan, our workers are... Uh, waking up early and hungry during the day, the, the only way to motivate them is for them to be given an allowance. Uh, oh, yes. We, we know that. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, allowance for notes, you are giving additional incentives for a performance done for allowance. As differentiated from bonus, the bonus is given because of your services. The, uh, the, what you did, the, the, um, uh, extent of your services, the period of your services. Yes. We take, but, note, we take note of that, Mr. Speaker, and if the interpolator would want to change the current language or the term use, he can propose. Well, uh, during I am, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, I am satisfied with the language use. I just clarify something so that uh, uh, the, the others can be clarified on the matter. Now, we uh, last year, how much do we give allowance to our Pangsamoro employees? Uh, if it, I remember right, it was 100% of their uh, uh, equivalent to their salaries. 100% of their equivalent salaries without any deduction? Without any deduction. So, meaning to say, to say, to say uh, they will receive gross if you are monthly salary 10,000, you cannot be deducted of paid building tax, GSIs and others. Yes. So gross, you will be giving gross. So that is uh, one month. Uh, how many employees are qualified for this uh, resolution? Uh, 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 are all employees qualified for this existing now? All employees in the barn uh, Qualified to a bill of this? Yes. This Mr. Bonus? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, if I remember right, last year, even job orders were given. Uh, even job, job orders. Because that's what we want to clarify. That the job orders are big. Because the saying of our young people that I'm not together there, we should be all. We should be all together there. So that all of us are Oh. Yes, Mr. Speaker. So, with that, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, nakwenta, nakwenta ba natin kung ilang pundo ang kay, na, kailangan dyan? Kasi, uh, just like last year, kina, kinampanya natin yan, sinabi natin sa tao, yung ibang agency, ministry, hindi nag-comply. Supposing may mga ministry, alam naman natin, mayroon silang savings hindi nag-comply. Anong pwede natin pwedeng gawin doon, Mr. Speaker? I think uh, still the parliament uh, controls the power of the purse and in exercising their powers, uh, these powers, we have discipline up, oversight and disciplinary powers to ensure that uh, all our resolutions are enforced, Mr. Speaker. We have to monitor compliance with these resolutions para lahat, yung masabi ko, lahat mabigyan at lahat masaya si itong darating na Ramadan. So with, without Mr. Speaker, kung maaari lang mamarapatin ng aking kasamang Deputy Speaker. Yes, maging, Mr. Speaker, maging, you don't have to mention. You, are, you will be a 
you will be one of the principal authors of this. Thank uh, you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much to the proponent. Thank you, gentlemen from Lanao. Next, Engineer Bayintan from Maguindana. Please proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And thank you very much, MP Tagu, for emphasizing that uh, um, this uh, proposed resolution is inclusive. Yun na nga yung sabi na sana all. Sana all talaga. Um, and I think that's the intention of uh, this resolution, Mr. Speaker. And um, my, my only question, Mr. Speaker, is that um, because most of my questions were already answered by the uh, questions of uh, MP Tago, um, for, for accounting purposes, Mr. Speaker, um, because I know that uh, we have an extended funds for 2020, 2021, and we also have funds for 2022. And in this resolution, the previous resolutions which we are about to adopt in toto as uh, worded in the resolution, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, the source will be from any available funds, Mr. Speaker. Um, my question is, is this funds discretionary on the part of the ministries and offices on whether we're, they charge these uh, particular resolutions once approved, Mr. Speaker? I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, we have adopted last year the same resolution and we authorized uh, each ministry actually to uh, spend from their, from any available fund. This this resolution authorizes them actually to uh, to exercise discretion on their funds. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that is very big actually. The word available because all the resources of each ministry and offices have corresponding programs and projects, Mr. Speaker. So um, my question really is: uh, Are we are we targeting the savings? of the ministries and offices as potential source because they cannot just um, get it from the program funds. If, it, if it's not intended for a particular um, program or project, they cannot charge to it, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, I'm looking at the savings as the potential source of this uh, uh, resolution, Mr. Speaker. I fully agree with the interpolator, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we cannot touch programmed uh, funds, but definitely the savings are, are an available source for this. That's why we, we termed it as an available, uh, from available funds in the Bangsamoro government. Yeah, um, my purpose here, Mr. Speaker, is to guide the ministries and offices because uh, whatever we see here will be the basis of their actions uh, later on, Mr. Speaker. And that's why I'm bringing this uh, concern so that they will be guided whenever they uh, will encounter it in the accounting uh, uh, entries uh, later on, Mr. Speaker. With that, uh, Mr. Speaker, I manifest that I'll be part of this resolution, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We, uh, the, the manifestation is accepted, Mr. Speaker. And all of those members, I, I, if you agree, I will move that all of us will be authors in this uh, resolution. Thank you. So next, MP Amir. Moalil, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, same with the, I think a number of questions were already asked by my predecessors. But I'd like to ask just to, yeah, again, for the purpose of accounting, I'd like to ask uh, if, since we have an extended budget for 2020-2021, and of course we have the current uh, budget for this year, I'd just like to ask if there is there a way for us to really put that into a language where the the funds that will be used for this for this one will be charged against the extended budget of the 2020 2021 uh, or or the current 
uh, appropriation just to be just to be uh, just to put that in 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 into context and so speaker i think uh, there is there is a way if, if you would like to amend it and put it in language we can actually put it here uh, but definitely uh, our the the language of the first resolution is adopted in toto and it states that any available funds of the bangsamoro government when we say available funds mr speaker we refer to all the how do you call this the class expense meaning we can use the available funds in the moe in the uh, ps any savings practically if if it is a program fund i don't think we cannot use that okay but ps and moe are you in agreement mr speaker that we can use that one for if, this if one? there is an allocation in the ps definitely we can use that thank you mr speaker mr speaker i'd like to know the since we have already adopted this last year and i assume are, are there finance people here who are member of the committee on accounts how much how much yung nagamit natin last year for this just just to put this a, a rough estimate of well, how wala, many wala akong rough, wala akong estimate mr speaker uh, i support this but i i i uh, if if it's okay to ask if the ministries and the line agencies can submit a report on how much did we utilize for the for the granting of this for last year just to have a clear picture uh, if you can move for it right now mr speaker you, you we can require them to make a report you can make a motion for yes that. mr speaker i'd like to make a motion mr speaker that the agencies and ministries uh, and including the bangsa parliament submit a report on how much did we utilize for this uh for this, how do you call this? For this program last year, since we have already adopted one last year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, last I, second the, I second the motion, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. There's a motion to require uh, hey. the ministries to submit on... Submit a report on submit the, a report on how much was spent last year. Yes, for this for this program. For this program, duly seconded. Is there any objection? Chair hears none. Say be by approve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my last question. Uh, I am in one with you with this resolution, but I I do believe that there is still a way we can write rewrite the title or probably come up with a tweak, tweak version of the of the one that we adopted last year we, you can always yeah. propose an amendment since i i am hesitant to use the word readapting in in toto but because this could set a precedent and so since this is also a matter of appropriation for me perhaps we can move some words and and write a new write a new uh, yeah you you can always propose an amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. MP Sultan Rimbang, please proceed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Mr. Speaker. Alaykum uh, wa Mr. Speaker, uh, gusto ko lang clarify, clarify anong saklaw na resolution na ito? Uh, na bigyan ng uh, bonus dahil sa Ramadan yung mga employee na Bangsamoro like uh, Bangsamoro member of parliament ating mga staff o yung mga kontraktual tulad dito secretary secretary general o dito sa Sardin at Am ito yung mga security natin dito sa plenary uh, minsan po ay nagsabi sila sa atin lahat tayo sa member of parliament Minsan nadidili yung kanilang mga uh, sweldo. Sila ba ay saklaw nito ng uh, resolution na ito, Mr. Speaker? Everyone is covered. In, even in, in last year, even the teachers were given uh, uh, this kind of allowance. Lahat. 
Saklaw. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. My last question, Mr. Speaker, I'm Sam. Uh, ang mga kababayan natin sa ground, dito sa within the BAM, wala ba tayong uh, resolution o batas na ngayon Ramadan ay makaroon din sila na kahit yung tinatayo, tinatawag natin na ayuda sa, sa mga kababayan natin, na dumaan man lang sa ating membro ng parliament, tayo mamimigay sa kanila, Mr. Speaker? Ulit lang, ho? Pakiuliyod, ah, uh, is that part of this resolution? Ah, yes. Kung hindi po, uh, mukhang ayuda. ayuda. Hindi ho, to ayuda. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I understand. So, kung pwede lang sa, sa aking kaibigan, uh, Atty. Marcima, Deputy Speaker, pwede mag-quotor sa resolution na ito, uh, papayagan po niya po ay mag-quotor din po tayo, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Salamu alaikum. Uh, I'm moving that uh, if you agree, lahat po ng members ng BTA ay principal authors na lang po nitong... Uh, thank you po. Thank you, thank you, po. you thank Sultan. You. Thank you, sir. Wala na po. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of interpolation. Uh, 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 the period of interpolation is now closed. I move to open the period of amendment. We now move to the period of amendments. Any, the period of amendments is now open. Any amendments? Chair here's none. <laughs> MP Amir then followed by MP Paisalim. Uh, palinawin nyo na. Bilisan nyo na. Yes, may we respectfully recognize MP Moal, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I propose that instead of we saying that uh, this resolution is readapting in total, may we retain the first total, iba naman yung reso number niya eh. May we uh, propose that we reinstate the original title, which is the resolution requesting the office of the Honorable Chief Minister to authorize grant of Ramadan allowance to all personnel and employees of the Bank of Moro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. You can just state that we adopt the uh, uh, first title of the original resolution. And then it will be, we can just pass it subject to style. Come again, Mr. Speaker. We... You, you just, uh, I mean, direct the Secretariat to write the original, the, yes. the, the title of the first resolution. The first, yeah. And then we can just move it to... Yes, adopt yes, it. sure. Yeah. May I proceed, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I... Uh, so since we are reinstating the original title, um, may, may we in the second where ask clause remove the reinstating the provision of resolution number 120 and instead start from the word providing Ramadan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will, the, the third where as clause is okay. Mr. Speaker, may I, if the proponent, proponent agrees that we um, delete Totally, the fourth whereas. I think uh, uh, I would not agree to that because okay. this, I'm just placing this as a as you know as a point of uh, a reckoning when we discuss with the uh, w because it has been referred to in the proper committee. I, I would like this to be a point of yes. reckoning in it, the, it's the, okay, the deliberations. That is just a suggestion, Mr. Speaker. And then on the next, uh, the resolve clause, uh, the same. We remove the word toto and retain the original, the instate the original um, version. I have not come up with the language on the charging, Mr. Speaker. It is in the uh, original form. Original resolution. That's why I I find it I found it easier 
and more convenient if we adopt it in toto so that all the provisions stated in that resolution would be would have been deemed carried yeah but i since we you have already accepted the original proposal to reinstate then you have to propose an amendment yes so the the so the result From the resolve clause, uh, please, please take note, Secretary, to resolve as it, as it is hereby resolved by the Bank Samoro Transition Authority to request the office of the Chief Minister, Ahud B. Ibrahim, to authorize the grant of Ramadan allowance source from savings, from the savings. From any savings, uh, MP Mawalil, I, 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 I have seen some uh, something that we should review here. Yung, the word requesting, I think, is uh, uh, quite improper because we, the parliament, have the power of the purse. We can authorize the chief minister, actually. We did not request him to make the uh, authorization. We are the government. Go ahead, Mr. Speaker, the, the proponent. So what are you, do you want me to propose? We authorize. Yeah. We authorize the chief, to authorize the chief minister. To authorize. To so, uh, the, the grant of Ramadan allowance to all personal employees to, and workers of the Bangsamoro government. Secretariat, pakialis na lang yung second no authorize. This is your speaker. The grant of a maybe please include also officials. Officials, to all officials, personnel, and employees, regardless of status, regardless of status. Oh, sige. Like, employment status status regardless of employment status i agree the propose to the pro proposed amendment mr speaker i accept i, I think uh, mp mawala mawalil will have to uh, make a wording on it mp amir Mr. Speaker, let me go back to the resolve clause. So resolve, does it hereby resolve by the transition to, to authorize? Huh? 
Charge against. Charge against. Can we just state subject to the availability of funds? Subject to the availability of funds. Or saving, subject to availability of savings. So I resolve. So we put the subject to the availability of funds, Mr. Speaker. Subject to the availability of funds, we agree to that. And subject to the. And just. Regular accounting. And subject to, for and further subject to, dun sa, dun sa last na, dun sa last. And further subject to the usual accounting and auditing rules and regulations. I standard though, standard, in the standard, standard accounting rules, accounting and auditing rules and regulations. Alisina yung usual. Subject to the usual accounting on and ah. auditing rules. Ah. SOP. And auditing. Eh. Ne, accounting and auditing rules. Ad auditing rules and regulations. Okay, then. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I, ag ag I agree to the amendment. You're done, uh, MP Amir. Are you done? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, MP Mr. Amir. Speaker. MP MP Paisalintago and then followed by MP Toy Mangoda Dato by Zoom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, I have to lay down the predicate before I make commencement. But if I'm satisfied with the answer, I will not make commencement. Ito bang resolution na to is an authority itself for the ministries to disburse funds for the particular purpose? Or does it need... <laughs> The, or does it need any guidelines I, I to, think that, of course, to implement to implement this? Of course, there is still guidelines here to be issued by the MFBM. So, yun ang amendment ko, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Whereas, because it's still, it's, it's, yeah, it's already well, well, stated well, there. Para madali, Mr. Speaker, ito ang amendment ko, if you, if the sponsor will accept. Whereas, Immediately upon the approval of this resolution, upon the approval of this resolution, the office of the chief minister, through the Ministry of Finance, Budget and Management, shall issue necessary guidelines reflecting what was mentioned in this resolution. Necessary guidelines to implement. I, to I suggest, MP Tago, that we, instead of putting it as a whereas, we put it in the wherefore clause because copies of this 
uh, resolution will be given to the OCM who shall uh, through the through the MFBM who shall uh, issue the necessary, necessary guidelines, guidelines necessary to basta, the basta naka-reflect niyan kasi baka uh, uh, ito worry ko lang Mr. Speaker baka naisun natin ng resolutions with your respect baka idailan ng iba sabi niya wala namang guidelines Uh, eh, baka kami ang... Yes, sa so work for clause na yan, Sekretariat. Thank you. Para sigurado lang tayo, may implement kagad. Sigurista Thank lang si Sigurista lang tayo. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Tama. Tama. Thank you. Susunod, mamaya-maya si, ano, si MP Toy pagka uh, ready ng sponsor. Meron lang correction kami rito, MP Toy. Last to interpolate will MP Toy Mangudda dato. Uh, may recognize to Mr. Speaker. Daling ang Toy. <laughs> Isip pa si Omar. MP Toy is recognized. Oh, uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Uh, it is just a matter of a clarification on the part of the uh, principal author of this measure. Hanggang saan ho ba ang saklaw nitong resolution na ito? Kasali ho ba yung mga impilyado sa provincial level na uh, saklaw po ng regional uh, government, Mr. Speaker? Are you referring to the LGU? Hindi ho sila kasali dito. Uh, not actually the LGU, Mr. Speaker, but those employees... Uh, that are uh, uh, deployed to the provincial uh, uh, provincial offices uh, ng BARM. Yeah, if you refer to the provincial offices, they are included. Yes, included daw. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> ah. Thank you, Toy. To Any more? Uh, if there are no more interpolators, we Majority floor yes, leader. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of uh, amendments. Motion to, uh, to close the period of amendments. Uh, duly seconded. Is there any objection? Chair hears none. And Same is here. Mr. Speaker, I move for the approval and adoption of proposed resolution number 702. Subject to style, Mr. Speaker. Motion to approve the resolution. Subject Thank to you. style. Duly seconded. Chair hears no objection. Yes. Yes, may we remind the Secretary that all members of the BTA Parliament to be principal author of this proposed resolution number 702. We are all principal authors, Secretariat. Yes. All members of Parliament are principal authors, so you are solidarily liable. <laughs> So, uh, the resolution, uh, Resolution 702, is now approved. I hope that it will materialize and be effectively implemented. Majority Floor Leader. Yes, Mr. Speaker, before we proceed, Mr. Speaker, it is an honor for the BT Parliament of the Bangsamoro people to respectfully and honorably recognize Attorney uh, Alex Sabaton, Mr. Speaker. Hindi ko naintindihan. Alex Sabaton, Mr. Speaker. Hindi ko, hindi ko marinig. Yes, Mr. Speaker. It is an honor for the PT Parliament to have a visitor today, Mr. Speaker. Visitor? Attorney, yes, Mr. Speaker. Attorney Alex Sabaton, Mr. Speaker. And the... Attorney... Uh, A Abaton. Abaton. A Alex... Ikaw na. One minute suspension, Mr. Speaker. I now turn over the chair to Omar Sema. Suspension, Mr. Speaker. One minute suspension, but I acknowledge the presence in the Great Hall of the Bangsamoro Parliament, Attorney Alex Abaton, Abaton. the former MSU. Welcome, welcome to the Bangsamoro Parliament. Mac, uh, yes, uh, former President Macapago, Macapadong Muslim.
was the very worshipful Kuyang Attorney Nabiltan, all the members of this honorable um, assembly. Um, I will take this opportunity again to pay our uh, courtesy to this uh, honorable uh, house of the BTA Parliament. I was the former regional director of the Land Transportation Office of Region 9 for 20 years. I am a career officer, and now, in fact, even before I left LTO, I was the chairman of the technical working group on the devolution and turnover of LTO offices from LTO National to LTO Barm. In fact, um, I, am, I am one of those um, regional directors in LTO who keep on pursuing the advancement of the interest of the Moro people. And now I am presently running as first nominee of the Bank of the Bayaning Choper BTS party list, uh, pursuing an advocacy that will eventually add to the moral representation in the House of Congress, inshallah. We will be an addition to our representative that will catapult indeed our struggle as a moral people. Again, thank you very much and wassalam. Uh, Mr. Speaker, 15 minutes suspension for Asar prayer. 15 minutes suspension.
Session resumes. Majority floor leader. Mr. Speaker, we are now on the business for the day. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the proposed resolution number 704 and uh, 705, uh, as, as far as this August body is concerned, they approve uh, same resolution with the same subject matter, Mr. Speaker. Uh, so therefore, I move to consolidate these two proposed resolutions, 704 and 770. Recording Public in service progress by the Bangsamoro government ministries or offices for a better Bangsamoro. Public officials have the responsibility to place loyalty first in their relationship with citizens and the law. It is fundamental to address and assist the concerns of the citizens that come into the government office as well as to help them in resolving any complaints and challenges that they may be experiencing. To help accomplish this goal, laws exist to aid officials in providing service with the highest degree of excellence, professionalism, intelligence, and skill, and to not get confused with the respective roles and responsibilities. Republic Act 11032 requires that at all times an officer or employee be accessible at the public assistance or complaints desk who has knowledge regarding the office's frontline services to provide consultation and advice to the general public same law requires that there be a citizen ch charter set up within the vicinity. According to our survey result, only six out of 38 BARM offices and ministries located within the Bangsamora Government Center have an official and operational public assistance desk, while only two of the 38 had a citizen's charter in place at the time of the survey's completion. One of the purposes of this uh, is uh, the aforementioned law is to reduce processing time. Having competent employees assist the customers politely and following proper measures in accordance 
with the Office Citizens Charter will surely lessen the time to finish the transactions. Moreover, this will ensure the accessibility of the government to the public. Attending to the needs of everyone uniformly and e equally will lessen or prevent any governmental complaints and service dissatisfaction. The full implementation of the PACD and the Citizens Charter will not only ease transaction processes, but will also encourage your people to reach out to the government more for their needs. We want to bring the government to the people of Bank Samoro. We always encourage our Bank Samoro people, especially the indigents and the transitioning combatants, to reach a specific agency with their concerns. Some of them, however, are often intimidated entering these offices for fear of not being entertained. We hope that by passing this resolution, we will be able to better connect with the general public and establish an efficient government for the Bank Samora. In view of the foregoing, the immediate passage of this resolution is earnestly requested. Mr. Speaker, may we respectfully recognize MP Paisal Intago, MP Mawalil, MP Jose Lorena, and MP uh, Rasmit Mug. The gentleman from Lanao del Sur is recognized. MP Baintana Patuan instead. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, I'm very supportive of this uh, resolution because this is what the uh, BARM government needs. Is this uh, resolution is a reiteration of the law that you mentioned, 11032 and the ARTA law, anti-rate anti tape act law? is a reiteration because uh, that law mandates all the government agencies to have their citizen chart and the complaint this. May I know, Mr. Speaker? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is uh, merely a reminder for uh, the BARM as a whole. Uh, at this point in time, may I know, Mr. Speaker, if the sponsor has knowledge that uh, this uh, this uh, citizen charter or complaint, this were not yet established in the, the Bank Samoro government. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, based on the survey of uh, our staff, uh, as I have mentioned uh, previously in my speech, uh, that was uh, what they found out. Uh, so that, uh, Mr. Speaker, it is very necessary to establish that, especially if I, if the, with the indulgence of the sponsor, especially on the processing of papers, uh, most specifically the vouchers for the salaries of the employees. Minsan, uh, tumatagal, Mr. Speaker, so there must be a time, uh, timeline. Eh, yun ang namisyon ko noon eh, uh, sa mga finance people na uh, at least uh, the, the maximum of three hours once uh, it lands Lands in your disk, yung vouchers dapat madispos na. Hindi dapat tumatagal doon, especially the salaries of employees, in which our employees na kailangan nila yung salaries because they, they rely on their salaries. So it is very necessary, Mr. Speaker, that the complaint disk or the citizen charter be established in every offices in the Bank Samoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao in order that, uh, as stated by the sponsor, we can uh, effectively serve the our constituents, especially or specifically the combatants who, uh, who came from the uh, island provinces on the mainland Lanao del Sur, from the far flung areas na pumupunta dito katapos hindi rin sila nasiservisyohan at, at saka hindi napagtutunan ng magandang pasin. So definitely, Mr. Speaker, uh, if the author is uh, willing, I am uh, want to be co-author. I, I think I am no one of the co-author of this uh, resolution and I am, I am very supportive in pursuing this resolution in monitoring the implementation of this resolution. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
The gentleman from Tawi Tawi is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I commend the author for a very well written resolution and the due diligence that has gone through. Mr. Speaker, um, let me go directly to my question. In one of the whereas, uh, I think it's in the four whereas clause, that the your office, Mr. Speaker, did a survey where only two out of the 38 uh, offices in the Barm Government Center have available citizens charter and only six out of the 38 government offices have existing public assistant co assistance complaints desk. Am I right, Mr. Speaker? Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, as uh, indicated in the resolution. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, did we bother to ask these offices, especially those who have not complied with, with, with the law, with this particular law, on what are the challenges that hindered them to establish a, a citizen charter or establish a complaint desk, Mr. Speaker? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Actually, my staff has uh, interviewed uh, um, and actually uh, duly uh, done their uh, work in asking the offices. And one of the uh, things is that uh, some of these offices are using the previous uh, citizen charter, uh, which is actually, um, perhaps it will not be uh, very, uh, exactly applicable with the current uh, setup. And um, um, yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that uh, answer. Mr. Speaker, did these employees who were interviewed by your office uh, registered some concerns or, or have proposed some measures in order to move forward that they will be, uh, that they are eyeing to conduct a session in wherein they will craft a new citizen charter. Are there any uh, plans for that, Mr. Speaker? Uh, in fairness to the other offices, yes, uh, there was mention of them uh, planning to uh, comply with this. But uh, as recently as uh, this year, uh, this is the data that uh, we have gathered. And actually, uh, some of my staff have, has even noticed that uh, if there are uh, constituents who are going through these offices, uh, usually it's the security guards who uh, assist them. So um, perhaps uh, uh, to follow the, um, the law, uh, it should be that uh, uh, experienced or qualified people who know uh, the services should be the one assisting our Bangsamora constituents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The reason that was cited by the proponent earlier, Mr. Speaker, was pertaining to the non-compliance on the citizens charter. However, Mr. Speaker, I am inclined to know on what are the challenges why some agencies in the bar um, still... Uh, miss the implementation of having to establish a complaints desk. So the reason that you cited Mr. Speaker for the citizens charter is because there's a, there's a need for them to craft a new citizens charter, but for the complaints desk, Mr. Speaker, I am inclined to know what are the reasons or challenges why they fail to establish a complaints desk. Um. To be honest, Mr. Speaker, I am not aware uh, what could be the reason for this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the, in the fourth whereas, Mr. Speaker, and if I may read, uh, whereas it's implement, implementing rules and regulations mandates that each agency shall establish a public assistance or complaints desk, which shall set up to, among others, effectively receive feedback and monitor customer satisfaction in a conspicuous area at their official place of business where an, um, where an um, it's, it's written in bold, Mr. Speaker, where an officer or employee knowledgeable in frontline services shall at all times be available for consultation and advice. Um, 
the reason why I'm uh, raising this particular provision, I am not really familiar with the with the with the specifics of this law, but hindi po ba uh, issue din to ng human resource since re- required na talagang doon sa mga complaints desk na yon kailangan magman may magman na from eight to five kasi sa siya sabi dito the desk shall be attended to even during break time. Mr. Speaker? Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, it could be a possibility. It could be a, uh, yes, as the, uh, yeah. Okay, Mr. Speaker, because I, I see that, uh, that we are still establishing our bureaucracy other than the three ministries. The, almost all of the ministries have been abolished, so... I see that some of our ministries have still are is, are still in the recruitment stage for hiring their new uh, employees. So maybe we can look at this problem as a contributory factor to why we still uh, miss the compliance of this particular law, which is to establish a complaint desk, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker, of course. Uh... We are uh, actually establishing a bureaucracy, uh, starting from almost starting from scratch, and uh, we are in transition. But uh, this resolution uh, seeks to remind uh, us all, Barm, to uh, perhaps comply with this in order to make the Bangsamora constituents uh, 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 further feel our uh, services uh, to them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm in one with the uh, proponent. Perhaps uh, we can we can pass this resolution, but also uh, I think we have to also be mindful that we can raise this question during budget deliberation of the line agencies for them to comply with this particular law and for them to submit lists of the uh, employees that are assigned to man this complaints desk. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, that would be our thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, uh, the gentleman from Sulu, MP Jose Lorena, is recognized, followed by the minority floor leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I load the filing of this resolution by our colleague, the member Abdullah Ed Sassin. In fact, uh, when I was asked to be a co-author, I manifested to jo- join the group as co-author. Unfortunately, my name is not yet included. Nonetheless, if the good gentleman from Lana would yield to some clarificatory questions to strengthen further the effectiveness of this solution. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The principal basis of this resolution is the ease of doing business as provided in the West, whereas an efficient and government service delivery act of 2018, which amended the anti uh, red tape act. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Speaker. In this particular law, were there no penal sanctions for agencies or administrative sanctions for agencies for its failure to comply with the provision of this? Uh, Ease of Government Doing Business Act in your reading, if I may. I am not aware, Mr. Speaker, and I am also not aware with uh, how it will relate to uh, the bar. Secondly, in our civil service code, are there provisions which would point to the fact that uh, there is a need to establish uh, the public assistance desk? Because as a member, as chairman of the Committee on Amendments, I intend to amend the civil service code just to put this uh, in the light of this resolution. Am I, in your reading of the civil service code, have you encountered some provisions directed towards establishment of a public assistance desk in every office of the bar? Uh, I am not aware also, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And possibly we will look into the, to the civil service code because this is a necessary input into public service. After all, the Bangsamoro government takes pride in saying that we are the vanguard of the Bangsamoro. And therefore, we're here to serve 
not only us, but the Bangsamoro people in general. In a way, Mr. Speaker, do you intend to strengthen part of the resolution to come up with a compliant time frame for our ministries? And if not, even have the, uh, the idea of putting some uh, impediment to the passage of the respective uh, budget in next year's budget if they fail to comply. Do you have that in mind? Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, in the uh, period of amendments, I, uh, we could consider. Thank you. Uh, I think this is really a good uh, initiative in order to make our government, the Bangsamoro government, closer and closer to our people. Because today, it seems that they are, we are working in isolation with the greater masses of our people. So I again salute and thank the sponsor for this initiative and much and i want to be associated with this resolution and i would like that my name would be put as with the co-authors of this uh, resolution thank you mr speaker i accept mr speaker secretary please take note the lady from uh, basilan is recognized assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you mr speaker and um, I would like to ask Mr. Speaker, the proponent, if he's willing to answer some cl clarificatory questions. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you, uh, MP Abdullah Hashim. At the outset, I would like to be part of this uh, resolution, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my first question, Mr. Speaker, is on uh, ARTA, which uh, is mentioned in this resolution, the Anti-Red Tape Act of 2007. Mr. Speaker, clearly ARTA has been implemented in the government bureaucracies and at the local government levels since 2007 or 2008. Uh, but it appears here, Mr. Speaker, based on the survey that was conducted by the office of MP Abdullah Hashim, that there are only two agencies that uh, have a citizen's charter and two, eight, uh, one, two, three, four, five agencies that has a complaints desk. I would like to confirm this uh, Mr. Speaker, may I ask the proponent if uh, when was this survey conducted? Just around uh, this year, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And may I uh, confirm that the agencies that have a citizen's charter are only the Bangsamoro Planning and Development Authority and the Ministry of Interior and Local Government? Yes, Mr. Speaker, as is indicated in our chart. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And my, may I also confirm that these are the only agencies with the complaints desk, the BPDA, the Bangsamoro Sports Commission, the Bangsamoro Treasury Office, the Ministry of Public Works and the Ministry of Interior Local Government. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When it is mentioned here that these are the only agencies with citizens charter and with the complaints desk, are their citizens charters and the complaints desk updated under the current dispensation uh, under the BARM? Actually, um, my staff has mentioned to me that uh, they did not include uh, those uh, uh, citizens' charter which uh, were not updated. So this data is uh, only with those that have created their own uh, citizens' charter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I had to mention the agencies, Mr. Speaker, not only to acknowledge that these are the agencies that have actually complied with a mandatory government regulation, but also to encourage and to at least, uh, more or less shame the other agencies and ministries who have not complied with this law, ARTA 
2007. Now, Mr. Speaker, if I may ask the proponent, for those who have complied, and this is just, these are just a few, two agencies only, yung kumpleto. The other agencies that I've mentioned, they don't have a citizen's charter, as can be seen in the survey report. Did they, these agencies, they have uh, recalibrated, have they recalibrated the following, which are required under this law, the vision and mission of the agency, the frontline services that are offered, the step-by-step -step procedure in availing of the frontline services, the employee who is responsible for each step, the time that is needed to complete the procedure. You can see this in all government agencies, Mr. Speaker. If it takes one day or three days or five working days, also, the amount of fees, magkano yung babayaran, the required documents, and the procedure for filing complaints. Where this, are this information found in the citizen's charter that is supposed to be posted in a conspicuous place in the department or the agency? Mr. Speaker, may I ask uh, if the proponent is aware? Um, Mr. Speaker, I... I cannot uh, categorically say yes, but uh, in the outset, uh, this resolution is uh, anchoring on the Republic Act 11032. So uh, the staff members who have surveyed uh, has this in mind. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Considering this, Mr. Speaker, I believe that not only do we really have to support this resolution, but I think we need to issue this resolution to not just authorize, not even mandate, because the law mandates this, but as a strong reminder to the executive to do its job. And that is to implement uh, not only the citizen's charter, but also the public assistance complaints desk or the whole um, the whole ARTA requirements as required under the law. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the proponent. Uh, Mr. Speaker, MP Romeo Saliga. And the MP, by uh, Tanang Patuan, to be followed by MP Romeo Saliga. The lady from Maguindano is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, on the result of the survey, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, and as uh, elaborated by the minority leader, um, only very few ministries and offices are compliant with the public assistance and complaints desk, as well as citizens' charter at the regional level. Um, may I ask the proponent, Mr. Speaker, if they also uh, included in their survey the services of the ministries and offices at the provincial and municipal levels, Mr. Speaker, because these are the frontline uh, ministries and offices at the localities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as is indicated in um, our um, uh, document, uh, we have only surveyed uh, in the main offices, Mr. Speaker. Is there an assumption, Mr. Speaker, that um, if this is the result at the regional level, chances are there is no really implementation of uh, citizens' uh, Charter uh, and uh, public assistance and complaints desk at the local levels? Uh, um, it could depend, Mr. Speaker. We cannot say totally that they may have not complied or they may have complied. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, this is actually the basic 
These two requirements are the basic for the operation of a particular ministry of offices, Mr. Speaker. And if we cannot comply the basic, we must have a problem. And um, we need to determine as a parliament what are those problems that is be, that are being confronted by the ministries and offices so that we can help as a parliament in uh, solving the problem, Mr. Speaker. Um, my um, suggestion, Mr. Speaker, and I commend actually the proponent because you've started looking at the core issues uh, of uh, the uh, uh, implementation or the accessing of services of our uh, constituents uh, with our ministries and offices. Because if this uh, two requirements are not complied, Mr. Speaker. What more can we expect with a local or with a common babu or bapa that cannot read or write? Even those who can read and write do not know what to do because they are, do not have a guide that will uh, help them in accessing the services of the ministries and offices, Mr. Speaker. And in, for this reason, Mr. Speaker, I really commend uh, the author of this resolution. Mr. Speaker, and uh, to the uh, proponent, may I ask if you think that uh, lack of appreciation or knowledge or trainings regarding the uh, uh, existing law could be the possible reason of uh, not complying with these uh, uh, requirements? I would not say completely, Mr. Speaker, but perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, lack of awareness. Lack of awareness, Mr. Speaker. But uh, these are existing laws, Mr. Speaker. And um, based on the law, Mr. Speaker, there are very clear penalties, Mr. Speaker, of violating the uh, Republic Act uh, 11032 or the act or the ease of doing business, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, um, I don't want to deal with them, but uh, I would like to remind all the ministries and offices that we are violating the law. And this should not continue, Mr. Speaker. And for that reason, Mr. Speaker, later on, I would like to introduce. Uh, some amendments to the resolution that would look at the compliance of the ministries and offices. But my last question, Mr. Speaker, is uh, would you know uh, what uh, agency is supposed to monitor the compliance of this law under the parliamentary setup? I would not presume to assume it, Mr. Speaker. And I would uh, further uh, uh, put it into the uh, wisdom of the uh, parliament. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I would propose some amendments later. Thank you very much. The gentleman from South OP is recognized. Uh, from DBS, rather. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And... Uh, I would just uh, have some clarification with the proponent if she is uh, willing to respond, uh, Mr. S Speaker. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. The, for the first question, Mr. Speaker, is uh, so this charter or public assistance desk are only intended for the, uh, of, uh, the ministries and offices. The parliament are not included. Um, I, I am not sure about that, Mr. Speaker, to be honest. Yes, why did I raise this, uh, Mr. Speaker? First and foremost, uh, I'm again remind, remind, reminded about our different legislations, which up to now are still languishing in some of the committees. I don't know if the committees uh, can be included as uh, 
among these offices? Um, I would like to uh, uh, clarify that uh, under RA 11032, uh, all government offices, Mr. Speaker. Yes, thank you for that uh, response. My, my second question, Mr. Speaker, is related to the, of course, uh, uh, this uh, public assistant desk really needs a skilled or shall we call it a, a special uh, trained staff to handle this position. So do we need some, uh, do we need additional staff or the ministry and offices need an additional staff for this? Uh, actually, Mrs. Uh, Speaker, uh, even existing staff would uh, perform this um, du uh, duty uh, as uh, they are just um, uh, going to explain to the public the services which the ministries or agencies are actually already rendering. So they will just have to explain the step-by-step uh, the -step process, for example, so I would assume that an employee of that ministry or agency should know this already. Yes, uh, I can again relate this, Mr. Speaker, because like in the case of the indigenous peoples, it has been the issue before, wherein like uh, what, ha what was raised uh, a while ago by my colleague here, they have the difficulty in accessing the services of our offices, maybe due to educational uh, or lack of uh, information or illiteracy, illiteracy problem, Mr. Speaker. So I think this uh, com complaint does, does it include them as uh, intended client for this? Um, all ministries and agencies, Mr. Speaker. So yes, although I am not uh, particularly uh, particular on any specific agency or ministry, but as a whole, uh, to serve is as a reminder, um, because uh, we want the Bank Samoro people to feel our services and uh, to easily avail our services. This is just our concern. And we, of course, as members of parliament, we want to uh, improve our services. Yes, uh, lastly, Mr. Speaker, for my manifestation, I just want to express my uh, commendation for the proponent for sponsoring this uh, resolution. And I would uh, like to be a co-author if he is uh, willing to accept. Yes, Mr. Speaker. The, the last, uh, I, there are still two uh, who have signified. MP Maisara Dandamon Latip and MP Eddie Ali. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Salamu alaykum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I was also a co-author, but unfortunately, I didn't see my name. Uh, with the permission of the... I will proceed with my interview. Although I manifest that I would like to be a co-author, if you will allow me. Yes, yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for I believe that the law in question is Republic Act... 11.032, am I correct? Yes, Mr. Speaker. And that law is the law on ease of doing business. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Speaker. That law is being implemented by the ARTA, Anti-Red Tape Authority. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Speaker. And the violations that involves uh, ARTA are very severe. Are you aware of the violations, if, if uh, you are aware? Uh, to be honest, Mr. Speaker, I have not looked into that as I am not sure how its relationship would be with uh, the BARM, which is an autonomous uh, government. Mr. Speaker, because uh, the Anti-Red Tape Authority Act is a national law that governs all agencies, offices, instrumentalities of the government, I believe that uh, even local government and even the autonomous an autonomous government like ours is covered by the ARTA law. Uh, that's the reason why, if it's not applicable, we, we should not have invoked it in our resolution. Am I correct? 
Ah, yes, Mr. Speaker. So if we invoked it, therefore, it's applicable because it's in the resolution. Uh, perhaps we could deem it that the overall uh, law should be applicable at, as it is a national law. But as for the penalties, uh, I am not sure how that would relate as uh, we are an autonomous government. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, because in relation to this, Mr. Speaker, since uh, there is already a premise that the law is applicable, it's also high time for us to be aware of the violations. No? Number one, if there is a refusal to accept application or even requests with complete requirements being submitted by an applicant without due cause, the penalties under ARTA would be a two-strike policy for government officials. And that this first offense, an administrative liability with six-month suspension. And then the second offense, the second strike, administrative and criminal liability, which will result to the following. Dismissal from service, imprisonment of one year to six years, perpetual disqualification from holding public office, fine of not less than 500,000, for future of retirement benefits. So, Mr. Speaker, among those violations, aside from the one that I mentioned, is are very incessant. Incessant meaning paulit-ulit. This is failure to attend to applicant, applicants or requesting parties who are within the premises of the office. Kasi sabi lang po kanina na of all the ministries, dalawa lang yung nag-comply. Hindi po ba napaka-glaring uh, po nun na dalawa lang yung nakakomply? Pangatlo po, failure to give the applicant a written notice on the disapproval of an application or request will result to either dalawa, first offense, pag inulit mo, uh, nagkaroon ka ng first offense, six months suspension, pag napatunayan mo, na yung ahensya na pinag a mo, sinabit mo yung complete, complete requirements, Mr. Speaker, at hindi ka binigyan ng sagot. Meron ka na agad violations. First offense, six months. Pag inulit mo, dismissal from service. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to take this opportunity that uh, members, constituents on the ground, are complaining a lot about our uh, services. That there are many applicants, especially those who are teachers, wala pong sagot kung bakit hindi sila nakuha despite submitting full requirements. Nagpagod po sila na mag-exam ng kanilang let, nag-apply, nag-interview, subject sila sa examination sa DepEd uh, Ministry, of uh, education. Pero after that, wala pong sagot ano yung mga reason kung bakit hindi sila nata natanggap. Pero dito po pala sa sinasabi nating citizen charter at ARTA law, may mga corresponding violations ang ahensya na hindi sumagot doon sa application na yon. So, Mr. Speaker, it's high time for this Bank Samoro government, for our government, to comply with the ARTA law. And of course, kung merong isang complainant na maket sa national government at i-complain tayo, baka mapwersa po yung ating ARTA authority na mag-render ng disqualification sa ating mga officiales dito sa Bangsamoro government. Let us not wait for that to happen. Let us uh, urge the chief minister to, in, to direct all the ministries and offices under him to, number one, set up the citizen's charter, and then number two, set up the complaints desk. Otherwise, the penalties and violations under ARTA law would, including the BTA, tama po, let us not exempt ourselves, including the speaker, Mr. Speaker, to, uh, to set up a complaints desk and the citizen's charter so that we will be fully compliant 
with the existing law on ease of doing business and efficiency of service. Uh, that's all, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. MPA Diali, you are recognized. You are given two minutes. Thank followed you, Followed by MP Atsfar Usman and lastly, uh, Sheikh Abdul Mujahid. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as a co-author of this Resolution 707, uh, I would like to comment. You, you are a co-author and you yeah. are interpreting. No, I, I have just some clarification to give emphasis for the need of this resolution. And I would like to commend our colleague, the principal author, to, for filing resolution number 707. Mr. Speaker, just for emphasis, do you, our dear prop, uh, proponent, do you agree that the setting up of the citizen's charter in the establishment of public assistance complaints desk are key to our advocacy of moral governance? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I completely agree. And do you also agree, I, I raised that, Mr. Speaker, as I have said, for emphasis, because the Chief Minister himself is advocating for moral governance. If these ministries and offices do not even have citizens charter and complaint desk, then I would say that these ministries do not, do not support the advocacy of our chief minister. That's why I, I raised that as to give emphasis to the need of, of assistance charter and complaints desk. And do you also agree, Mr. Speaker, that the, that the citizens' charter supports or upholds standards, uh, um, quality service for all people? Um, yes, Mr. Speaker. Although I would just like to clarify that I would not uh, personally uh, presume that the offices who are not compliant with this are not implementing moral governance but it could uh, make the, this implementation better. And of course, it is the law. So I, 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 would, I would agree with the proponent, Mr. Speaker, that while we are, all of us are supportive of our, our chief minister, but we should support, all of us should support his advocacy. That's why I raised that question that this ministry is, and as mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, the other, our other MPs may provide the amendment to, to, to this, to that effect. Mr. Speaker, the charter, the citizen's charter is one of the tools of government to communicate our services to the people. In the absence of this, Mr. Speaker, we, uh, it implies that we could hardly even communicate with the citizens on the government service that we provide. Do you agree, Mr. Speaker? Uh, perhaps uh, they could communicate, but with this, it will be uh, institutionalized and there will be a <clears throat> uh, desk where the uh, constituents know where they are supposed to go, as opposed to uh, being confused. Mr. Speaker, the, the mentioning of, of ARTA and the ease of doing business you know, are all mandatory for, for all of us to have this. I have no other questions, Mr. Speaker, but uh, again, I'm supporting this uh, resolution and I, ju I, I just would like to give emphasis of the need, of the need for us to comply with the laws, or with, with the existing laws. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Uh, next time, Majority Floor Leader, if you are, if one is an author or co-author, he should not, he or she should not be allowed to interpolate anymore. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Duly noted. 
MP as far as man, please, uh, two minutes. Ready, 5.28. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to commend the principal author of this resolution, my esteemed brother, MP Abdul Hashim. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I am supporting this resolution and I would like to be identified with this uh, resolution or I am also or I was maybe a you, maybe you should manifest that later after yeah, yeah. you I have I, not, I have after you have already I'm, asked the question. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I'm not in any way uh, having questions. This is just a short manifestation or I was also a victim of this uh, negligence and omission by the agency here in this uh, uh, sacred barn uh, uh, supposedly serving us. How can we serve our people if uh, I myself, I wrote one time I wrote one, an agency here and it took us more than one month to be responded with our data requested. Had I not threatened, had I not threatened them and demanded vigorously to be responded, to be given the data I requested, uh, hindi sila magbibigay. Doon na lang sa Committee on Budget, uh, Committee on Finance in Budget, sa budget hearing natin, nag-ask apology ang isa sa employee na doon, sinulatan namin, na hindi pa naman yung ano, request for a data uh, from their offices, so wala pong answer. So it took us almost two months. So I, I, I really appreciate uh, brother, and I commend you for uh, having this sponsorship uh, ano, uh, resolution. And if you may, I would like to be identified as part of the co-author of this resolution. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from Basilan is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, first and foremost, Mr. Speaker, I commend the uh, author of this um, very timing uh, resolution in coming up with this kind of very important resolution, Mr. Speaker. And uh, secondly, Mr. Speaker, uh, I would like to uh, manifest my intention to be part of the co-authorship of this uh, resolution. And yes. thirdly, Mr. Speaker, I uh, have uh, a little uh, concern about maybe this. you should manifest later after you have asked the question already yeah. because if you manifest to become a co-author you can no longer ask you can no longer interpolate okay thank you mr speaker <laughs> uh, um mr speaker i just want to know uh if the author of uh, this resolution uh, brother mp abdullah hasim um aware that this um, resolution or the PACD is part of the civil service uh, law, Mr. Speaker. Uh, can you repeat the question, Mr. Speaker? Um, is the author aware of uh, the PACD that uh, this is part of our civil service law, Mr. Speaker? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, my point of uh, raising this question, I still remember it right, Mr. Speaker, during the deliberation of the uh, approval of the civil service law, this is the, the, the provision that motivated me in coming up of a proposal, uh, amendment, to come up also with another, uh, uh, well, this is, Amendment, the so-called um, values reformation officer, because of this, Mr. Speaker. Yung nakita po natin, uh, napakahalaga po nito na may, may, may desk complaint po. Uh, so yun po, na, nag-introduce ni po tayo ng another uh, amendment. Though, though it was not uh, accepted during that time and uh, uh, to the extent that uh, the, the house was divided into uh, a division of the House for the votation of my proposal during that time. Um, <clears throat> I do believe, Mr. Speaker, this very important resolution is one of the key uh, in uh, uh, realizing the good governance, Mr. Speaker. 
Biro mo dalawa out of 36 or 38 na offices, dalawa lang po ang nag-complain dito. And then, yung uh, anim out of the 36 ang may uh, PCID. I do believe, Mr. Speaker, the previous offices of ARM, they have this, maybe. Some of the offices, they have this, Mr. Speaker. If only we can uh, ask uh, our offices na parang hindi na silang mahihirapan just to review the previous offices uh, or um, cabinet uh, department to look into the citizen charge, Mr. Speaker. For instance, like in, uh, in the case of the regional Darul IFTA, the defunct Darul IFTA of ARMM, um, th th there was a citizen uh, or manual of operation and uh, citizen uh, uh, charter, Mr. Speaker. So, um, to my surprise, na hindi pala kasama dito ang Darul IFTA uh, Bagsamoro Darul Ipta na may charter change na yung previous na uh, regional Darul Ipta meron. So, I, I think, Mr. Speaker, um, uh, it's better, I think, to be part of our request to our offices to look into the previous offices uh, about the existence of these uh, citizen, citizen charters or manual of operation, Mr. Speaker, uh, just for them to easily uh, edit it, Mr. Speaker. Kasi uh, lahat po tayo talagang nakikita natin ang important na to. So that's all, Mr. Speaker, my, my uh, uh, proposal, my name is Mr. Speaker. And uh, finally, Mr. Speaker, uh, again, I want to be co-author of this uh, 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 resolution, Mr. Speaker, if this auto is accepting it, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I accept, Mr. Speaker. And just to clarify, uh, some of the offices are using the previous ARMS Citizens Charter, but we did not include it in the data because, of, of course, we want them to make an, an appropriate Citizens Charter for, uh, for the BARM. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I can see the Deputy Speaker from Sulu uh, standing, maybe he has a few questions. He is not a he is not a co-author yet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Will the gentleman yield to one or two questions? Yes, Mr. Speaker. We, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, uh, the purpose of this resolution, I think, is to. Uh, uh, empowered our citizenry in terms of asserting their rights by way of uh, being attended in the citizen's charter as embodied in several laws and regulations from the civil service to the art, the law, ease of doing business. Is that correct? Is my assumption correct? Yes, Mr. Speaker. And uh, this is meant to improve uh, also good governance and attain the advocacy of our Honorable Chief Minister of Moral Governance. Yes, Mr. Speaker, to build upon the moral governance of uh, the Chief Minister. And uh, I think because we are not anymore in the arm, you mentioned a while ago that you wanted to see the bar ministries under the barm come out with all their own citizen charter. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Speaker. And uh, if, if that is so, and this is uh, this resolution is approved, Mr. Sponsor, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, uh, <clears throat> the ultimate uh, implementer of this will be the office of the Chief Minister, who may issue the necessary directives for the compliance of to this resolution. Will that be okay? Yes, Mr. Speaker. So. With that, uh, Mr. Speaker, I now uh, make manifest my intention to co-author, and I already submitted my written uh, co my written uh, intention to co-author resolution 707. Will the gentleman allow that? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretariat, please take note. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of interpolation debate. There is now, now a motion to close the period of interpolation debate. 
Mr. Speaker, I move to open the period of amendment. There's a motion to open the period of amendment. Is there any second? Been seconded. The, the period of interpretation debate is terminated and the period of amendment is now open. Yeah, uh, the lady from Magindana is recognized. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank um, you for a while. All of those who have proposed amendments, please, please, uh, I, I'm not saying this for MP by Intan because she's already in the rostrum. Uh, those who have proposed amendments, please submit your proposed amendments to the Secretariat. Proceed, MP by Intan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please go down to the last, uh, where us, uh, resolve finally, after resolve further. Resolve finally, the last part. No, no, no. After the further. Resolve finally that a consolidated semestral report, semestral report on the compliance of this resolution. Yung resolution ng malaking R shall be furnished to the BTA Parliament, comma, through the office of the speaker, comma, Immediately after one month, after one, open, close, one, one month of each semester, Mr. Speaker. It's na hindi, each, each. What is the pleasure of the proponent? I accept, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Secretariat, Mr. please take note. Semester. The lady from Tugaya, you yes. are acknowledged. Did you submit your proposed amendment? or Not, that, not yet. Uh, I will just also dictate it, but it's just a very short amendment, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Proceed. Yes, Mr. Speaker. In the uh, Before this result further, the other result... Mr. Speaker, it, it appears that the resolve, as it is hereby resolved, the dispositive portion is not the same as the title. Yes, yes. That one. So it should be consistent, Mr. Chair. The Bang Sambay, Bang Samoro government, it means it includes the parliament, Mr. Speaker. So it should be copy-paste. Yung title. Yeah. Urging na lang, not to urge. Mr. Speaker, can we use the term directing instead of urging? What is your recommendation? Directing the Bang Samoro government to fully implement. Instead of the word urging, we use the word directing. In parliamentary language, uh, that's also a, a strong term to direct. Because it's mandatory. It's under the law. There is no leeway for non-compliance, Mr. Speaker. What is the pleasure of the proponent? Uh, my, uh, I accept, Mr. Speaker. So it should be the same as a title. Po. Secretary, please take note. And then, lastly, Mr. Speaker, copy-paste na lang. Yeah, directing.
uh, before the after the last we are asked close Mr. Speaker. We're asked the we're asked Kama the ease of doing business law. The ease of doing business law. Provides for bio, provides for violations and penalties under the provides for penalties for violation thereof. Provides for penalties. Provides for penalties for violation thereof. Which are administrative and criminal liability. Liabilities. Take note, the word is not or under the law. It's and, Mr. Speaker. So if you have both, meron ka ng administrative the case, meron ka pang criminal case. So I believe, Mr. Speaker, we should really have the citizen starter as soon as possible within this year. Even the BTA, Mr. Speaker. That's all, Mr. Speaker. Is that right? What is the pleasure of the proponent? Do you accept? That's uh, in the law, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, I accept, Mr. Speaker. That's all, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much to the proponent. Secretary, please take note. I really loud the proponent for this resolution. Majority floor leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to close the period of amendment. There is a motion to terminate the period of amendments. It's been seconded. There being no objection. The period of amendments now terminated. Mr. Speaker, I move for the approval and adoption of people's resolution number 707, Mr. Speaker. There's a motion to approve and adopt subject to style, Mr. Speaker. Proposed resolution number 707, subject to style. Is there any second? It has been seconded. Hearing no objection, proposed resolution number 707 is approved and adopted by BTA plenary in plenary session, subject to style. Mr. Speaker, they paying no other agenda and order of business and move for the adjournment of the session until tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Session is adjourned until tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock in the afternoon.